Hello and welcome to this presentation video. This video is for our geometry assignment number two. For this assignment, we were instructed to choose a traditional art around us and do a paper on it. For this assignment, the title that we chose is Batik. Now, let's take a look at the introduction for this assignment. Bate is a craft and an art form that is becoming increasingly well known, and it is also being becoming well liked among modern artists all over the world as a delightfully imaginative medium. In various countries of the world, spanning China, Japan, India, South America, and Europe, Bate is becoming increasingly well known. The Javanese word Thik, which means dot, is where the word Bate comes from. However, Bate techniques can also be applied to surfaces consisting of paper, wood, leather, or even porcelain. Bate is often manufactured on a fabric surface such as cotton, silk, linen, rayon, or hemp. The wax resist coloring technique, known as bati, dates back centuries in Java, Indonesia. Some of the best batis in the world are still produced there, where the art of bati is most highly developed. Malaysia's tradition of producing bati, siburon, wasib, Tuban and Madura, the northern coastal bati producing regions of Java, have impacted Jambi bati. It is well known that trade contacts between the Malayu Kingdom in Jambi and Javanese coastal cities have flourished since the 13th century. Indonesians place a lot of importance on bati, and many of them dress in it. For formal and informal occasions, Indonesians frequently employ bate in a variety of rituals, ceremonies, traditions, festivals, and even day-to-day -day activities. The Malaysian government is currently endorsing Malaysian bate as a national dress. Bate is widely referred as a natural or cultural icon in Malaysia where the third Sunday in December is des designated as Malaysian Bate Day. Many Malaysians still dress in Bate every day for both informal and formal occasions. 2.25 meters length of Bate are typically marketed and used for kain panjang or sarongs. It can be turned into a blank on cap or worn by wrapping it around the hip. A single pattern may be applied to the fabric continuously or in portions. Only specific areas of the fabric are covered in particular designs. Examples include the Pasung pattern, which consists of a row of isosceles triangles and the Drulong motif, which is a diagonal for floral design. Good morning, good evening, sorry. Uh, my name is Muhammad Zubair bin Joni and I am going to present about part B, which is uh, geometry shapes, concepts, and also transformation and motifs. So, oh, sorry, my number matrix is D2020, as it is shown on the screen. So, first of all, the concept of geometrical shapes applied. Uh, just in case you're not sure, the object that we are going to talk about is batik basically the shape a design that has a lot of surfaces and also a lot of shapes which is a shirt so it is only logical that there is concept applied geometrically on the object things such as the color neckline material choice scaling factor and also sizing plays a part in the concept of geometrical shapes so the concept so color a modest change in angle will restrict the color opening so basically, a 30 degree angle, for example, results in a tiny than usual color opening. 
the color opening will be broader if the angle is greater the color opening will be three times as big if the designer utilizes a 90 degree angle instead of 30 degree angle so basically just by the color it already applies a geometrically concept a geometrical concept the next is neckline the color opening will be three eh, wait sorry any mistake and the neckline may get either too steep or too obtuse and the results it's a dress with a neckline either too narrow that it won't fit around the head or an irritating droppy neckline that slips down every five seconds the next one is the scaling factor during careers in fashion designing the scale factor is an important concept used to decide how much fabric will be required to compose the final clothing piece and pattern to sizing ratios in the scale factor concept fashion designers make sure make use of geometry to determine how much smaller the pattern would be than the final attire <coughs> sorry so that's it for um the geometrically the geometry application on the object the next one is we're going to talk about the transformation and the motifs of uh, said objects yes so the one of the worthwhile talking is the geometry transformation of parang barong it's usually used by aristocrats or kings for religious rituals and meditations. However, in its development, this batik can also be used by anyone. The motif in Parang Barong batik depicts weapons and power as the power possessed by a knight. The value that can be taken from this Parang Barong motif is when one becomes a knight or leader, he will have the weapon and the weapon that will be his strength. And it should be used for the good and wealth of the people. It used the concept of geometrically geometrical transformation in the form of translation. Uh, as it's shown in the picture below, that's basically Parambarong. And you can see that it's it used the translation geometrical transformation. The next one is a uh, Sido Wirasat pattern. Sido Wirasat pattern is basic motif is basically an illustration of parents always giving advice and guiding the bride and groom to start the marriage. Thus, the value that can be taken from the said motif is that when a child chose to marry, parents have to let go of their child but they will be there to help or give advice in their marriage. In addition, in making big batik motifs, Sido Wirasat pattern, it used the concept of geometric transformation in the form of reflection and translation i will show a picture to help imagining it easier uh, so it's under the so it's basically used as the before pattern which is a uh, parang barong parang barong uses translation but this one uh, has an add-on which is the reflection one so the first uh, the first picture on the top left is a uh, translation and uh, the bottom one is reflection well, it's, it says there, so you can just, yeah. The next one is Yogyakarta Batik. Yogyakarta Batik motifs, which shows that the Yogyakarta society has already used the concept of geometric transformation that they discovered themselves and that these creative ideas has emerged from their experiences in determining the forms of Yogyakarta Batik motif. Based on history, before Indonesia's independence, Indonesia consisted of kingdoms included, including in Yogyakarta, there was the Mataram Kingdom. The culture of the Mataram Kingdom community believes in ideology, values, norms, manners, and ethics that are inherent in their daily life of the community and they have a desire that they, what they believe is also believed by future generations so that social order will not go as far off the social order during the kingdom. Basically, they just want to... Uh, keep things as the way it is therefore they try to pass down their ideology their beliefs to any media including to Yogyakarta's unique batik motives the results of this this report <laughs> that showed that in every Yogyakarta batik motif it contained moral messages the ones that I said just now like uh, ideology values norms ethics and ethics that govern how to relate to humans how to relate to nature how to lead and others in living life it's basically like a passed down book but they did it in the form of the batik transformation that's it for me thank you very much for listening
Now, let's take a look at the summary and conclusions of this assignment. Bhatte has been around for the very long time. It originated in Indonesia and spread it to the entire world. Malaysia has been influenced by Bhatte. Malaysia has its own style of Bhatte. Bhatte and geometry exist together. The intricate details in the design of Bhatteks have the elements of geometry. For example, the Parang Barong and Sido Virasat pattern. This shows that geometry and mathematics as a whole plays a very major role by existing in every part of our daily lives. Thank you.